Hello, everyone. My name is Dio Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron podcast. We're coming to you live from the final, yes, the final of the Ryloth Galactic Championship qualifier. And I am super excited to announce that this final has no Nantex in it. No shame to any Nantex players out there. In fact, I, I, I am a good friend. I, I, I feel that uh, top four competitor Daniel Leon, who brought Nantex, is, is, is a friend and played Nantex and played well. Congratulations to him getting to the top four. But I will tell you, it is nice to not have bugs on the final table. <laughs> <laughs> Super excited here, and it's the final, so that means hype music. So we're going to play a little Convergence as we uh, we bring in our commentators for this round. We have the Firestorm Firecast joining us. How's it going, friends? We also have D. Yoon in the house, our marshal and judge. I completely failed because the audio is not routing correctly. One more time. How's it going, <laughs> Firestorm Firecast? <laughs> not too bad. Thank you for having us. Man. I'm so tired, yeah, guys. Yeah, well. <laughs> and how's it going, D. Yoon, our judge and marshal? Um, hang, hang it tough. We good. And, and, and it's, it's watching that dawn to slowly uh, brighten the day. And those, those random cut-ins by our very own Nick Sperry. Straight off the struggle bus. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can't. I can't believe how incompetent you are, Nicholas. All, all I hear is Dion uh, smashing you for uh, not being on the ball. I I ran out of tissues. It's been a sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, the bets are open. We got Timo Rabe versus Julian Hood. Uh, this is Team Germany versus the. Uh, it's actually. Let me, I don't want. Uh, I don't want to get this wrong. So Julian is Australian, but lives in the UK and plays for the 186. So yeah, it's yeah. Team Commonwealth is what it is. There it is, Team Commonwealth. <laughs> Let's go ahead and break down these lists, Firecast. Indeed. So I'll, I'll jump in first and take um, Timo's list. I did it last time, and of course, being our resident uh, scum lover. So uh, Timo is running uh, Boba Fett with Composure, Jamming Beam, Maul, Proton Bombs, Hard Upgrade, and Slave One for that 114 points uh, thick Boba. Uh, and then go with Marksmanship, Proton Torpedoes, Auto Blasters, L337, Han Solo, and Contraband Kinetics. And I'll, I'll take Julian's list. I've played against it a few times recently, and Julian himself. Uh, and he's come with a four-ship uh, Imperialist, all at I-4, compromising of uh, Fifth Brother with Passive Sensors, Homing Missiles, Seventh Sister with Passive Sensors, Magpulse Warheads, Ved Foslo with Passive Sensors, Crack Shot, and Major Vermeil with Intimidation. We did see him on the stream earlier. And for people who don't know who Ved Foslo is, because he is the pilot that probably people recognize the least, uh, he's basically the old uh, 1.0 Juno Eclipse, rebranded for 2.0. Uh, so whilst you execute a maneuver, you may execute a maneuver of the same bearing and difficulty of a speed one higher or lower instead. Allows him to do some great things like getting a hard one on a TIE X1. It does, indeed it does. Uh, we, of course, will take our personal bias out of this game in terms of yours who both uh, Dom and I do know. Uh, however, <laughs> I do think this is going to be a fantastic game. Timo and Jules are both phenomenal players. Of course, Timo, uh, current UK um, system open champion and Space Jam winner, and Julian is one of the most consistent cut players uh, that we know, and both of which have been very good uh, with their respective lists. Um, going into the game, looking at just on paper between the two lists, I think that Timo may have the upper hand, the i6, the i5, but Julian able to get all those I-4s off at the same time with that Magpulse Warhead and things, I'm not quite sure. I mean, Dom, what do you think? Uh, I will always find it hard to bet against Julian and the Imperials. And this Imperialist specifically has a lot of tech for aces. And whilst um, Team Mo's list is not traditional aces, they are both following in the same sort of archetype. You've got the, the I-5 and I-6 that move after him. So he's got all those passive sensors to guarantee he can get the missiles off when he wants them. He's got the options to coordinate. Vermeil with that intimidation as a 
blocker. If you can block Bobber, Bobber might mm -hmm. get his rerolls, but there's only one agility. Yeah. And that allows those Imperial ships to put some real damage into it. And as well as having things like Magpuls to be able to strip offensive tokens and let the uh, let the rest of the ships open up into it. I think he's got a real chance here. All right, so here's my question. D, who do you think has the advantage in this matchup? I'm, uh, I am have to concur the the repositioning of Boba Fett at higher initiative and uh, that punchiness of uh, those uh, Dengar torps is, is going to be hard to repel firepower of that magnitude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick, where are you sitting? Uh, this one, this is tough for me. I really... I, I really think it just depends on how Dengar is able to utilize the torpedoes um, when that happens. Um, if he's going between targets or if he's nuking the same one in one turn, that's that's going to be really important. So it, that's I think I'll have a better idea of what's what's about to happen <laughs> once that first engagement goes on, what, what, what way I'm leaning. But I am indecisive at this point. All right. Well, the people right now with still four minutes left on the betting clock have 66% of them are leaning in the Boba Fett camp. All right. So here we go. Julian able to move in and take a target lock here. Yeah. We can see Julian. Julian. Yep, no, it's the same. Vermeil just taking uh, taking the bump there. Yeah, I was going to say, you can see Julian just slowing his list down there by being able to self-block Vermeil and making sure that he's not overextending. And just keeping the ships tight, being able to give that really wide uh, arc of fire mm -hmm. and being able to keep that game uh, and keep, keep his list together and being able to guarantee that he's going to be getting as many shots onto the same target as possible. Oh, we got a talent roll there from Boba Fett. Talent roll from Boba Fett little aggressive but I like it yeah I think, I think go ahead I was just going to say I, th I think the, 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 the reason for all that is again you can see uh, Dengar coming back in and he's just trying to guarantee that the firepower is all there together and, and trying to maximize the damage output that they can do at any one time Yeah, so I must admit, it's an interesting one here with um, Timo's going super aggressive early and getting the getting everything set up. I do like Julian's ability with that mag pulse warhead to end up stripping uh, tokens, trying to get rid of that lot to make sure the, the proton torps um, aren't going to be as effective. I'll get rid of the mm -hmm. focus in case he already has one, but it's a. Uh, uh, I, I, I agree with you, Don, though. I like how. Uh, Julian's using the self bump, slow his list down, keep those arcs wide. Um, but I think that Timo wants to try and get the engagement on his terms, get a ship off the before Julian uh, can respond. I'm not sure what Julian's aim here will be. I mean, I think I think his hope is whatever he catches, he needs to maim it. But of course. Timo gets an opportunity to say something about that with those proton torpedoes that D was bringing up earlier. I think ver very similar to the last game, this game will hinge on the effectiveness of those proton torpedoes because there there is a timeline where Timo can absolutely wipe out Fifth Brother, Seventh Sister, or Ved Foslo in a single turn, just gone before they even get to attack. Now, of course, the advantage here for... Uh, for Julian, is the fact that all his ships do shoot at initiative four. And with some of the tools that you have there, with Fifth Brother being able to push through a crit, assuming that you hit. Uh, Seventh Sister with her crack shot-like ability. And uh, Vermeil, when we saw Julian play earlier, take really taking advantage of the jam action. Okay, Using that jam action to clear some of the available tokens. We'll see if that happens. And, uh, and Ved Foslo, of course, just being a tie advanced and being able to uh, do some pretty consistent damage and making sure to get those target locks established with the passive sensors. I'm, I'm really curious to see what ends up going down. And um, my question to the chat and to you guys is, where do we think Julian is going to focus his forces? Is he going to be going towards Boba Fett, towards Dengar, or kind of like in, in the middle? I think he'll go after Baba here. Dengar, he doesn't want the revenge shots from 
uh, knows that he can get around that mode um, easier than the repositioning of uh, so I think uh, to, considering where his ship's lined up at the moment as well I do think personally uh, it's interesting I, I'd, I think he might hedge his bets a little uh, with Julian or potentially might go after Dengar and just the thought process behind that is if he goes after Dengar that gas cloud uh, is there which might potentially give him some protection and coverage from Bobber coming in um, but having the Magpulse warheads with certain system might mean that he takes a proton torpedo to start with but if he can then hit with that Magpulse and strip the target lock Bobber's revenge shot isn't going to be the second proton torp which means that it reduces that the, the potential damage from that return shot and he can try and get some serious damage onto Dengar and try and get him off the board as quick as he can. Now, one of the approaches that we saw Julian use in the game uh, before was the ailerons to the right and slooping into the corner in order to slow Vermeil down. I'm curious if we'll see that. No, but obviously not. Vermeil heading to the front with the aileron straight and then a two forward slapping down the focus and it looks like julian is kind of going quote unquote in the middle um might be splitting fire here and getting whatever he can with the available uh move movements of what timo does of course passive sensors of strength there is being able to react during the engagement phase yeah he's, he's gone for that a bit more conservative uh 50 50 choice and try and cover all of his options as best as he can Indeed. I'm just to see what uh, Timo has done with Dengar here. If he does bring him through the middle, does bring him down the bottom, because if he um, it does come down, tries to get uh, the meal, then you could see the, the talk. Uh, but no, he's choosing to go through the middle. All right, let's see where this range ends up. Okay, so Dengar can choose anybody, but that also does show that both B Ved Foslo and Seven Sister have range and arc on Dengar. Now, Ved Foslo does not have any uh, defensive tokens because it took the passive sensors. Could be the easiest one to really do some significant damage, but it is the cheapest. Mind you, not by that by that many points. It's 48 points, and the most expensive list, uh, ship in the list is 52. So still a good chunk of points. Yeah. They're all round about the same. Timo's taking this uh, decision not lightly. I think, I know he's looking at Vermeil in terms of that, that jamming um, capability and of course Vermeil's native ability, but also the Magpulse Warheads from Seventh Sister. So he, and as you said, the own uh, no defensive modifications uh, Ved side. So he's got a few good options. Depends on if he wants to double down Vermeil with Boba and Dengar, if he wants to try and strip um, some force off of Seventh Sister. Uh, no, it looks like no, he's, he's going to do the double down. Yep, he's going yeah, at Vermeil. Yeah, which I think is sensible. Vermeil gives um, the Imperials and um, Juvian a lot more options because he's able to jam ships. He's got the ability to coordinate if need be. Um, he can get that block in with the Intimidation, which really uh, increases the firepower of the other Imperial ships. So I think going for Vermeil is a sensible option here for him. All right, so we got the Han Gunner trigger and Proton Torpedo flying off. Four dice. And that's going to be at least three. Is he willing to spend the focus? Dengar will be guaranteed first blood. But how much does he want? He wants all of it. <laughs> two hits, two crits. Ved Foslo, one die, no range bonus, and is going to be taking all four of those. Two hits, two crits, and those crits are going into the hull. We got a stunned pilot. Stunned pilot and a blinded pilot. Stunned and blinded. Oof. That means that Vermeil's ability doesn't work, by the way. Because that is, happens during the my, dice modification step. So that's what Indeed. Blinded Pilot prevents any offensive dice modifications outside 
of uh, using the force, which of course she doesn't have, and then stun pilot taking damage when hitting obstacles. Boba Fett's up now. Unlikely to kill Vermeil, but definitely causing some pain to start off here. One hit, two focuses. Has a focus available. Choosing violence. Going all three hits. Guaranteed to take Vermeil down at least to two hole. No squiggles there. I wonder if Timo would have spent that focus uh, <laughs> had that blinded pilot not uh, been inflicted. Oh, doubt it. <laughs> right? uh, I would imagine no. It's it's bonus. It's just like oh look look at this free ability, the naked card you have there, and one crit sitting there for Vermeil. Safe. Do notice the power of that blinded pilot. That could have been three hits on Vermeil in this current situation. You're spending the focus plus their ability could have been hit hit crit, down to one crit. Blinded Pilot, very often a very detrimental crit. Yep. Here oh, is the yeah, passive sensors great. trigger. Seven Sister. This is the Mag Warhead, Mag Pulse Warhead, excuse me. Hit crit. Spending the lock? Yes. Reroll. Got it. So, I mean, that's guaranteed to hit. That's going to be one critical damage, which essentially will be a shield. But then he also is going to receive a jam and a disarm token. Not a disarm, excuse me, a deplete. Yeah, so he stripped that target lock that uh, he had on the meal. Mm-hmm. So that's going, to call, that's going to cost Dengar an additional turn. Ved Foslo also has a lock now using passive sensors. Didn't get any hits, so unable to use advanced targeting computer. Reroll them all. Two hits. And able to actually do a couple of shield damage. Dengar is officially unshielded. Yeah, Sadie's for Dengar, unfortunately. The fifth brother's up now. Looking at Boba Fett. I wonder if he's going to go for, just go for the homing missile, plus fifth brother's ability just to try and strip a couple of shields off of Boba straight away. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I think, think so. He I think he is, and I think that's what he's asking team at the uh he wants him to It can be quite risky to have, to allow somebody to roll those four dice. We have I have seen that go go bad before. Uh, I've I've done it and Dom's done it against me and uh, it went badly. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of hit crit, it was four hits and a crit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it went properly wrong. And, yep. yep, he's going to go ahead and allow the single damage from homing missile, not the four dice, and then Fifth Brother uses the ability to add a crit. Yep, spends both his force to do that, um, but gets a couple of shields off of Boba early. Uh, Maui, Mike Beard, and Sub Hedgehog need to clean their ears. I love them. But Vermeil has both stun pilot and blinded pilot. Stunned and blinded. Los dos. Uh, no, it's because it's saying he's put a the, the stun pilot sat on Ved Foslo's um, uh, bit on the overlay. Oh. Ved, sorry, not Vermeil. I need to clean my eyes, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it's, right. it's, it's been a long time with Dion, and you've done amazingly so far. Uh, no, no, uh, no we, we I did it. He on. said, my, Maui said, I did it. He said, Dion, you did it. No, actually, I can blame Nick. <laughs> Nick, wake up. Yeah. Come on. And, and we love you, Dion. 
<laughs> Notice that I got rid of it as soon as before before you even realized what I was talking about. So it's, it's not there anymore. There's no evidence. So, no evidence. You say there's no evidence, Nick, but this is recorded for prosperity. So there's going to be fair, at one me. point you were mentioning that all those hits were going into Ved Foslo. So I'm like, okay, so all the hits went into Ved Foslo, and then I'm like, wait, uh, that's for meal. <laughs> Ved Vermeil, what's the difference? All right, so uh, all the all the misspeaking aside, sorry, Dion, D classic Dion, brain here. Where can Vermeil go and either cause enough distraction where Teemo can maybe get into a bad position, or uh, or maybe maybe even stay alive? Question mark? Maybe. Hmm? Uh, I think it's going to be hard for him to stay alive. Uh, I do. But it would be tempting to have a look at the one bank aileron to the left and then one sloop left. Yep, potentially that could fit. And Mr. Dob, you are our resident uh, Imperial player. You've used uh, the Reaper a lot, the Striker even more. So, so I'm leaving this one purely in terms, in terms of what's going through your mind when you look at this board state or Julian. Um, I mean, I you, you, you're going to see um, Seventh Sister and Ved just come into that gap where the in between the gas cloud and the asteroid. Fifth Brother is probably coming around that gas cloud, potentially looking to be in Bobber's way. Uh, the only other thing I can see potentially with um, Vermeil is just going like a one forward um, and just bump into Bobber. Uh, to try and, but Bob is just going to go over it, and with Slave One, you're not going to really block it. Um, he's he's just in a really bad place uh, with one health left. I don't really think there's many options he can do that's going to keep Vermeil alive. So it's just trying to make force, um, force Timo into doing the least. The, the thing he's least comfortable with with Bobber, he's, he's not, he doesn't particularly want Bobber to go into that centre gap. So if you can have a meal in the way that stops Bobber going to the left and, and stops him disengaging from that centre core, uh, it seems worthwhile. So potentially just like the one forward full stop from the meal um, blocks the, the, the bank moves going to the left, which means that Bobber's either going to bump straight into the meal or he can go the other way. And if he goes the other way, it goes into Seventh Sister, it goes into Ved, and potentially even into Fifth Brother as well. Now, uh, actually, I really like uh, what Ali said right here in the chat. By the way, our, our world champion uh, says, he says, Julian needs to get Bulba to shoot Vermeil this turn and trade him for Dengar. I mean, obviously, points-wise, that's a good trade. 52 points versus 86. And there is Vermeil... Pointing his way at Dengar. Looks like a jam action. Well, yeah, he's got a range, range for Dengar. And yes, jamming Dengar. Jam. So that takes away a focus or a target lock. He has the passive sensor, it's just keeping his options open. Try just a asking Dengar to just go into the aisle. <laughs> come into the box, Dengar, <laughs> come into the box. Sit somewhere here, someone will shoot you somehow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fifth brother deciding on an action here. Tough choices. Yeah, Ollie, Ollie's correct for sure. If if Julian can end up with those three shirts versus Bobber, it's definitely winnable. It's not ideal, but it's definitely winnable. Okay, He's... interesting here. Going going for the block with fifth brother. Yeah, Bobber turning away. Bulba has that back arc on. Yeah, I think you see a lock here from 
not sure where it goes, I think. As a um as Ollie was pointing, I think Jules wants to try and bait him with Vermeil and as a trade um Vermeil for Dengar. So if uh, indeed Timo does go for Vermeil, then I think as you said he does have a shot. Um if not, I could see Boba just boosting away here. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure about Fifth Brother's boost himself. Uh, but Boba has gone for the lock, grabbed the lock onto Fifth Brother for later on in the game. Yeah. Um, well, the, the boost got him out of range one from Boba Fett, so yeah. I, I think that's prob that's likely the the reason there. But here we go. Oh yeah, I, I agree for sure. I think that's definitely the reason why he's done it. And by having that jam and blocking him, it does mean that he still can't get the Han Gunner focus token. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he likely will just not Han Gunner, so because because he ends up not with without the focus and the jam comes off at the end of the turn, no reason to take a stress. Yeah. Now Dengar gonna go ahead and use the side arc. That'll be three dice at range one with the turret arc. Remember Dengar does have auto blasters, but this is not that attack. Will not be rolling any hits that time. No target locks. Here is Boba Fett. Another three dice that's, attack. That's great news for Julian. The more shots that the meal has to take, the better. Oh, not going to survive that one. Hit, hit, hit. How many cards? All of them. So we'll see what the trade is here. You need some good crits in order to actually get rid of Dengar. But definitely hoping for some meaningful damage. When Seven Sisters' turn is up, remember she does have that crack shot like ability. Both of her force are available. Spend two force to cancel out a squiggle. Yeah. Vet is first, though. That's range two. Shit, range two. The advanced targeting computer could definitely come in handy here. Changing a hit to a crit, but we've got to see what Ved rolls first. That's a good spot. Good spot. Changes a hit to a crit. Has a reroll. Going to be looking for max damage. Might be debating a holding onto the target lock. No, I think uh, Demo is debating whether he uses L337. Ah, yes. This is the time, and the answer is yes. L337 has to re-roll all of those attack dice. Ends up with the same result. Two crits, but doesn't give Julian an opportunity to possibly convert that focus token. Two defense dice happening. Did get one evade, still takes one crit. It is a damage sensor ray. You can only perform focus actions while that card is face up. That does mean no rotate, no barrel roll, no target lock. And no more torpedoes. At least not for a while. Here is the Mark. response. You have Dengar using his ability. Ooh, three hit natties. Range one auto blaster. No natties for Ved. Couple of shields going down. This is in fact Ved Foslo taking two shields. I said it right this time, yeah. right? I, and I, I put it on the overlay accordingly. There it is. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Same team. <laughs> Same team. It's the little things in life. <laughs> Here's Seven Sister, range one, three dice. Trail Mix has a force available, but also the target lock. Gonna spend the target lock. Will it be on both? Mm. Tough choices, tough choices.
All right, got hit crit. He's going to go ahead and just spend the force for max damage. Hit, hit crit. Guarantees that the crit's going to be going through. And that's going to be hit crit. You got half points on Dengar. And it is a loose stabilizer. Loose stabilizer. After you execute a non-straight maneuver, suffer a damage and repair this card. And the, the the one thing to to think about as well with L three three seven forcing the reroll, it does mean that Ved keeps his target lock. On it Dengar. sure does. So he doesn't have to worry about getting another target lock if Dengar's going to be his choice of uh, target this time. So you can look at being a bit more uh, aggressive, perhaps, with a turnaround move. Uh, got to be wary if Bobber looks to drop a proton bomb. Um, but there's those options available to him. Indeed, he does need us. I mean, I, I'm not quite sure that I like uh, Bobber's position for this turn. Um, yeah, I agree. We could see the proton bomb from Bobber. In fact, I think it's highly likely you see it coming. Uh, but what Bobber does from there, I'm not quite sure. I think he may just do the hard um, grab a lock somewhere for prosperity or to uh, maybe try and boost in, try and do something. And so you could see the um, uh, he'll got, uh, sorry, he'll got contraband, so he won't be able to do the contraband uh, Tanner, but you could see a Tanner. Dengar, I'm not quite sure though. With that loose stabilizer and only having um, three hole left, I don't know if he's going to risk uh, not doing that. He also wants to kind of clear uh, that damage sensor or clear that loose stabilizer as well. We, we, we have seen oh, um, Team is not afraid to take that damage, so mm -hmm. I'm really unsure as to where Dengar will be, but I do think that um, he's going to try and maybe slip out that net as much as possible. But do think we'll see that proton bomb in front. One of the things yeah. we want to remind you also with L33 being used, the bank maneuvers have had their difficulty reduced. So that means that Dengar does have some more options uh, later on in the game as he continues to maneuver around the table. Yeah, I think if Bob is going to drop the proton bomb, I think we're going to see Dengar doing a non-straight maneuver perhaps uh, to not get hit by it. Um. Because if he, if he does like a big straight maneuver to get behind the gas cloud, uh, he's still going to have the loose stabilizer. He's not going to be able to clear it this turn. And he's going to start running out of board space to be able to turn around. Exactly, right. exactly. I mean, Dion, what would you do in this situation if you were in Timo's shoes? Timo's shoes. I mean, you're probably tempted. Uh, you're probably tempted to do the talent roll here because you know that you're likely going to lose Dengar here very soon with only three hull probably this turn um, I it depends on how desperate you are to drop the bomb I, I think that if you wanted the safe play you can play around the bomb um, and maybe try to force Julian to do something I don't want to not dumb but do something desperate, make a desperate move. The problem, of course, is the fact that Dengar is in the way. So you can't, the, the Empire can't really move towards the bottom. Um, you know, I think if, I think that I would drop the bomb on Boba Fett, you go ahead and just do the hard turn, get ready to re-engage from the other side, and you can attempt to bank three right with, uh, with Dengar. And clear the space. And if the if the bombs end up missing, that's not a big deal. But you are getting an opportunity to reconverge both Boba Fett and Dengar together. Yeah. Should uh, Fifth Brother be back up to full force now? Uh, yes. He yeah. didn't use any last turn. Is it not listed at four? No. All right. Yeah. Okay. Seventh system used one, so she should be up as well. Yeah. Alrighty. I definitely, Party time. I definitely agree with you, Dion, in terms of your assessment of the scum news. I think if I was in Timo's position, I'm taking that damage from the loose stabilizer and doing a mm -hmm. three bank with Dengar to try and just get him out. 
of, of the furball and keep him away from the proton bomb, which I want to drop with Bobber. So you see, right now, it's we're in the system phase. Timo needs to decide if he wants to drop it or not. He's thinking about... I mean, it's, it's always interesting to, to, uh, to think about when we play, right? All the different permutations and ideas that we have and what the moves are. And sometimes we think exactly what the player is seeing, but there's always there's always opportunity to be wrong. <laughs> yeah. Here is the proton bomb getting dropped. It also depends on uh, how Julian's read it as well, because Ved Vedfall's like being able to turn that two hard down to a one hard probably would self bump the seven sister, stay there and get in the way of the three bank return which would block mm -hmm. Dengar and keep him in that area. So we got the one turn from Fifth Brother. That looks out of range of the bomb. So it might just be an opportunity to take an evade or maybe set up a target lock for the future. Being able to go in fully modified is always nice. Yeah, he's already got his target lock on Bobber, so it depends whether he wants to switch it or just take that evade and stay there and be quite tanky. Alright, so yeah. we're going to go ahead and take the evade. Defensive actions for Fifth Brother. Now for anybody who's joining us, and maybe you've never watched a final before, but it's important to remember that sometimes the pace of the final can feel a little slower um, just for the fact that it is a two-hour game. The players are given extra time, so some players use it in different ways. Some people look at it as like, well, I can get more rounds in. Some people look at it as, well, I have more time to think. Neither of those ideas are incorrect, but just so you can kind of uh, kind of think about it. I know that even even right before we jumped on here, the, the idea of a two-hour final is a, uh, a hot-button issue, I would say. But uh, we're not going to solve that today. It is indeed. I think so. You There's see, a talent roll. Yeah. So you can see Seven Sister there doing the uh, the one hard getting away from in case also Dengar does jump over. Ved self bumping again. Again, keep away from the um, uh, bomb, but keeping that arc open again for Dengar, depending on where he goes. Uh, I do like the, the talent roll here from Bob, though. I think it's the, the right time for it. Timo's just deciding where he wants him to, to line up, obviously. I'm hoping we see uh, the K turn from Dengar. It would be a thing of beauty if he did. And it looks like he's just taking the damage. Taking the damage from the least stabilizer. And did a two bank. He bumped into Seventh Sister, which means Vezfalo would have a shot. And it also may have blocked Dengar. Probably out of range of the proton bomb. But good to keep him nearby. They haven't checked. No, they have not. I assume both of them probably expected that it's missed. Ooh, all right. Well, Dengar whiffing on that attack. One crit using marksmanship. That does favor Julian. Being able to avoid damage in this engagement will be absolutely massive. No damage for the bomb. Got the squiggle. Got it just on the little tip over. <laughs> Ved Foslo not eating any crits. And currently protected by the cloud, I believe. No, yep. not protected by the cloud. Just it's barely unobstructed. Mm. So I doubt Boba Fett's going to fire on fifth brother. Here it is. Shot into Ved Foslo from downtown. Three dice. Two blanks. Is Ved is Ved gonna be able to get out of this unscathed? Wow. Oh, Got the squiggles. One. <laughs> of course, Ved now, crucially, with the shot into Dengar, still has that lock from the L3 uh, the turn before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And if 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 Ved can kill Dengar here, even if he takes the return shot and gets halved, that still uh, that still helps out massively getting a ship off the board. Here we go. Four dice. Looking average. Changes one to a crit using advanced targeting computer. Rerolls two with the lock. Got another one. Dengar's at least taking one. He's got two defense dice. Uh, he's got him in bullseye, so he's got crack shot available as well. Well, doesn't need it. Takes two crits. Dengar down. Now, Dengar does have the opportunity to use his ability before he dies. Panic Pilot. And Panic Pilot. Four stress on the way out. Um, and yes, just, just a note to uh, somebody in the chat. The Auto Blaster does not do auto damage when the enemy ship that you are firing on is looking at you. So that's why there's no. That's why there was no uh, auto damage there. Here's the response. Hit crit from Dengar. Changed an eyeball to a crit. Uh, should be two crits, I think, because the marksmanship yeah. would have changed the hit to the crit. So two yeah. crits into Ved, leaving him on one. If um, if neither of these are direct. But he's taking he's taking three three cards. Uh, I'll check. Uh, the I, I believe Han Gunner was triggered there. Just I'll go confirm. Oh, okay. That's that's what it was. Because he sp spent the focus, uh, spent the focus, turns one to a crit. Got it. Yeah, makes sense. We missed that. With all that stress. Well, we figured it out. We figured it out at the same time as the chat. <laughs> All right, so that means Ved Foslo's down. Ved down. Yeah, so can the Inquisition finish off Boba? You know, I don't... The, the fact that they are fully healthy going into this is actually really, really interesting. The TIE V1 is a very defensive platform. And yeah. with a two-hour final, I think the TIE V1 has a chance to actually pull this out. I, I don't think this game's over. Oh, no, are, for sure. Are you guys at all concerned that Seven, that seven Sisters is about to run over that gas cloud and Boba could just... Yes. That was the and then either that way, broadside make. Seven Sister there, yeah. That's that's the only concern that I have this, this coming turn is that she could die, potentially, if he's able to get in a decent enough position. And, and confirming that was uh, a uh, Han Solo Gunner focus spent and marksmanship into the other crit. Cool. Uh, Fett here, though, is stressed, so that's a bit of a, uh, a downer in terms of truly capitalizing on that strained uh, uh, TIE V1. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if, if Seventh Sister just does like a hard one down towards Timo's board edge and brings Fifth Brother in with the hard one towards Bobber, um, I'm not sure Bobber wants to turn into potentially another homing missile from Fifth. So may look to turn away, and if he does turn away, even if seventh does get strained, uh, she will have the protection of the gas cloud to help protect her from Bobber's incoming shot. I would almost argue that that in that situation, if if seven sisters facing the opposite way and Boba can get close, that it's worth taking the last two shields from fifth brother as last homing missile shot as well. If you can kill seven sister, if you really believe you can. But... Yeah, no, sorry, I mean, um, Seventh Sister facing left. So if Barber does come down towards Fifth Brother, even with the boost option, Seventh Sister's got that shot there as well. And it is really useful the fact that the target locks are now set up before they engage again. Uh, in, indeed. Um, Chester Sasuke didn't Seventh shoot, and I agree. They may have missed over. Uh, well, Julian definitely engaged because he took the target lock. Whether he yeah. decided that it wasn't worth shooting yeah. through the gas cloud. Yeah.
Yeah, I mean, he took the he took the target lock. It probably, probably was the thought. It's like, you know, I'm not going to spend this target lock almost no matter what. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Does take a strain here. Does take a strain. And to do that maneuver blocking. All right. I, I like the... I like the support here from Fifth Brother because this is saying if you go after Seventh Sister, you do have to take a shot from Fifth Brother. Like that, that is, uh, that that's how family rolls, man. That's how family rolls. I think it's totally worth it if he does a one bank. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. He's and just he's coming, coming in. in. Oh, yeah. Totally worth it. Re rerolls in Maul should take yeah, care of most of it. With the strain on Seventh Sister. Absolutely. Yeah. Bob will be like, fight me. Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like Timo is thinking about taking a reinforce action. That is a red action, I believe, on the uh, fire spray. But nope, going for the focus instead. Just barely, just barely has Seven Sister in the front arc. But that's all you need. Remember, Seven Sister is strained. That means minus one agility. Four on two. Here's the four dice. That's pretty strong. Probably just spends the force right there. Three hits and a crit. Oh, you got to spend the force. Spend the force. You got symbols. Still takes hit, crit, two shields, half points. Flip all the charges. Which is probably about as good as Julian could hope in that situation. Yeah, yeah for sure. All right, fifth brother. Looking to try to do some damage here. Trail mix, one of each. Has a focus token. Has a target lock as well. Target lock, blank to blank. No conversion there. Spends a focus. Still has both force available for the ability. If need be, nope, not going to happen. You do have to actually hit in order to do it. Back to dials. Yeah, and that is, although, although Seventh Sister got halved, that was about as good as Julian could hope there in terms of, again, as you say, with Bob having the rerolls, having the force, having the position. Yeah, not great, but Seventh Sister's alive, and from here on out, it's going to be tricky. I, I don't really like. Fifth brother's position at the moment, though, with that stress. I like it for the spot, don't get me wrong. I like it for the shot he just had, but for this turn, I'm not quite sure what I would do with uh, fifth that I was Julian. I think maybe toward, turning towards the top of the board um, might be an option, but again, quite sure. Yeah, I think it's... Sorry to cut in, guys, real quick. With Boba, from my experience with Boba, too, when Boba still has any of his shields up, he just seems impossible to take down. Once you know, once you get those shields down and these ships specifically can start sinking, using their abilities and sinking crits in and everything, that's when he can go down real quick. But Timo really came out on top, even though he only got half on Seven Sister there. And Fifth Brother spent the lock, too. He's got to spend a turn getting that back. Um, yeah, I, th I think Ju Julian's thought was there. If 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 seventh gets half, but you can remove those last two shields off of Bobber by sneaking just the one damage through from the range one shot. He's got target lock focus, three hits, not an unreasonable uh, thought process. If he can get that, even just that one hit through, plus his ability would have removed the shields off of Bobber, and I think he would have been happier with that exchange. But with Bobber taking nothing, uh, Timo definitely uh, definitely up from that exchange for sure. Uh, agreed, agreed. So chat is debating at the moment, dropping the Proton Bomb here. With, I personally wouldn't drop it here. I don't think you'd hit 7th, 5th. Uh, uh, in fact, if either of them are anywhere near that bomb, then Julian would have done something. Uh, I think keep it for later on, keep it for mind games, but also area control. I would definitely not drop it here. L let's talk about that, that part. The mind games part. I think that's actually really interesting. <laughs> right? Because if you're always wondering... You know, if it's affecting your maneuvers, then that bomb is starting to pay for more, pay for itself more than in just damage, but also in affecting how your opponent is flying. Especially, that makes it extra scary for Seven Sister, who doesn't have shields anymore. Yeah, I think Timo definitely made the right choice not dropping the bomb there. 
Um, yeah. it's, it, it'll be so effective later as well if if Bob is in that position where he's being chased by the two V1s. Just sticking that proton bomb there uh, gives him that chance to... Or even just the threat of that proton bomb coming down gives him the chance to have a bit of a breather and uh, escape some damage. Yeah, agreed, agreed. And of course, now with Seventh Sister being where she is, if he, if Timo decides, uh, has just done the one bank and decides to bump into Fifth Brother, then he'll have the perfect position to the draw next turn. All right, taking the evade with Fifth Brother. Boba Fett using Slave One, the power of Slave One right there. We've we've known for a long time it's a great card. Takes a focus. We'll have a range one shout out the back. Fifth Brother has evade and two force. Bulba's going for it. Yeah, I think, again, Julian just taking the evade there. Gives him the best options. Four hits coming in from Boba Fett. Three evade dice. We'll be able to get three evades after spending the force in the evade. One shield on fifth brother. Again, that's about as good as Julian can hope. <laughs> Wade snaps in the chat says, It's weird to have relief watching Boba win a game. <laughs> I think that's in reference to the fact that we don't have an Antex in the final. <laughs> Well, you know, this this tournament we've had we have plenty we had Nantex in the in the in the cut of course. I think there was 6 of them total in the cut. I could be wrong. I'm just my my brain is very tired. But it, it was around 6. So they were there. And Daniel was the king of the Nantex today, getting all the way to the top 4. So they're still obviously very good, but people I think are starting to find different solutions to them. We definitely had some very different lists that I had not seen before. Uh, make it to make it to the top. I mean, let's look look at Julian's list. His list has honestly a lot of tools. Even this is the fact that uh, we were told earlier that he's been flying this list or a variation of it for a while now before Nantex were even a thing. But he actually has a lot of tools against that matchup, which I'm sure that helps um, in his um, in, in his opportunities to actually play against it. It's just it's just really really great to see some people coming up with some very different squads, and I do want to remind you guys I had mentioned that looking at the release dates for Heralds of Hope, Heralds of Hope and the Tide Brute will actually be legal for the Galactic Championship, so we're gonna have plenty of twists available. Yeah, and I mean yeah, Julian was flying this before the points update as well, so before um. The, the, the Nantex became a thing, and in fact, uh, his previous variation uh, just didn't have intimidation on Vermeil. And then, with the change in how passive sensors was, with going more to the initiative based, uh, his list actually gained three points, which is where the intimidation on Vermeil has come in. Indeed, and Boba now having no target here on uh, Fifth Brother this turn, which is allowing Julian now to regroup and uh, double his efforts. Mm hmm. Being able to come around with uh, Boba Fett having those target locks on him already will be helpful. But it really depends on the approach because we have we definitely have seen this kind of jousty Boba Fett where, depending on how you set up, they will approach with a bank maneuver. And you, you set up, you're like, all right, if you come in this area, you're going to get shot. And Boba's like, well, this isn't my time. I'm going to go the other direction and boost. <laughs> no shots this turn or shooting out the back. And you can continue doing that. And, and Boba Fett would slave one. It's really, really hard to catch. Indeed. Yeah. The, although now, I do wonder if the power of the two-hour kind of come into its own. Because, yes, Boba um, has all the, the cards in his favor. He still has shields. Uh, he will have his rerolls. He'll have um, everything at his disposal. He still has that second proton bomb as well. But Julian can now use Seventh Sister, use Fifth Brother to get them lined up. Uh, he still has a Magpulse Warhead and a homing missile. So he can still then strip and uh, push damage through. So he's got options and tools there. This game is fun. Yeah, I mean, if if Julian uses the time and and just you need a little bit of luck and <laughs> a little bit of luck and uh, and some good decision making in order to push through some damage. 
Looks like we got yeah. a talent roll there for fifth brother. Very rare to see those Ty V ones actually use those turnaround maneuvers. Hard one for seven sister. And they're gonna converge together. Yeah, I think he, he he's he's got to aim for that like range three engagement now and uh use okay. those missiles he's got. And get get that range three engagement denies the uh rerolls as well. And yeah, sorry, uh, as you were saying, Timo's done the 4K there. Uh, to again, just line back up and quite happy to to, to play this um, play this game at the moment. Joust me! <laughs> <laughs> I am Bulba. <laughs> it's super good. I mean, it's, it's great. Yeah, so it's easy to the chat there. Joust part two, uh, Joust Lou. I'd really like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Julian just needs to uh, give Sense Sister her force back. Because she's back up to full as well. No, nah. no. Nah, it's interesting how different things would look if uh, Timo was able to fire that second proton torpedo because he wasn't able to get that one off mm -hmm. from Dengar. This is something I mentioned earlier. Just like not really sure how it was going to go because of those torpedoes, but he wasn't able to use both, which is a big deal, I think. So, Ved also, Ved Foslo also taking up those extra shots was was gigantic. Oh, for sure. And also, Vermeil, uh, just surviving one shot longer than Timo wanted, I think, has also done Julian a favor. Yeah, absolutely. Now, before we go too far, I want to remind you guys that we stream live here on Gold Squadron Podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. It'd be lovely to have you guys uh, on Monday, when we break down the top 32, talk about what we think is coming in the hyperspace Mustafar qualifier. That's happening next weekend. So if you want to play in the Mustafar hyperspace qualifier, tickets are still available. And then in a couple weeks after the Mustafar, we have the Coruscant Invitational. Super excited about that. If you are a player in the Invitational, if you earned an invitation, I have sent you an email already uh, you can go ahead and, and get your sign-up all set so that we can be set to go. That includes anybody who got a roll-down invite. I sent those out as well. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. <laughs> I, I suddenly feel very tired. I did not realize that Mustafar was next weekend. Neither yes. so and I will be playing in that. Yeah, yeah, and it's back on Australian time, right, Dion? No, 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 no. It Dallas, is Texas. Dallas, Texas yep. time before the switch of daylight savings. Yeah, that's bad enough for us, but we're still doing it. I realized, <laughs> we brought, I was making a joke, but I realized that now everyone might be confused as to as to what I just said. So sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! You're it's breaking our logistics. <laughs> Wait, that helps. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> Well, no, no, no. Ne next week, next weekend is not the daylight saving shift. There's, it's the weekend after. It's before. It's before it. Well, Dion, you, you and I, we, we daylight, we nighttime savings all the way around the, to flip our clock. So Th this it's, is true. It's all, it's all irrelevant. <laughs> it's all good. Should be fun. Should be fun. Yeah. This is neat. Um, uh, just uh, watching the sunrise as. Uh, as X-Wing is happening. <laughs> like, hello, son. What <laughs> time does Musafar... What's the start time for Musafar? So all of our GSP events run on the same exact clock, the same time schedule. It's just dependent on... Your local time is just dependent on, on what the event time is. So if you look up Dallas, Texas, the time there, 10 a.m., that is when dice will roll for Mustafar. The player meeting is an hour before that. So player meeting starts at 9 a.m. Dallas, Texas time. Yeah. I, I find this uh, choice um, fascinating by, by Julian to curl around that gas cloud. Ah, uh, you know, I think I think the thought here, D, is if if he can get Boba Fett to engage in spots where Slave 1 is either not possible or at least limited just a little bit, that could give him a chance to actually get shots on Boba Fett. It's quite savvy. 
two hits flying in at fifth brother. We'll see if the damage actually gets through. Denied. After spending the force. Dion, we were talking while you were away, we were talking about um, how often today and, and yesterday blanks have been re-rolled into blanks. Mm-hmm. Just at an exponentially higher rate 75%. than I used to see. No, why? Go <laughs> <was> snot now. <laughs> um, I think the, the dice cam didn't display the the rolls on the last uh, yeah i was engage. i was opening i literally was opening a window that covered up the dice cam and i didn't want to disturb gotcha <laughs> your brains it would have hurt your your minds i'm sorry i'm sorry it was bad timing on my part are you trying not to show us your like financial information and the social security number and all that <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 all that <laughs> yeah yeah we'll, we'll get that in a private email in a minute it's fun <laughs> patron exclusive <laughs> uh, the pork chop express in the chat just wants to remind people that the uk and usa have different weekends when the time goes back so the uk will go back next weekend yeah yeah so it okay so just look up dallas texas next weekend that that's that's the answer <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm relying on Pond to make sure I get to where I need to be at the right time. Oof, that's a knowing me, that's a wrong choice right there. Same team, Dom, text me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Now anyone who knows me knows that 15 minutes late is me being on time. Try not to do this time. Oh yeah, I, I guarantee that if, if I need Phil to be anywhere, I purposefully tell him about half an hour to an hour before the time he needs to be there, and he <laughs> might be on time. It's that's, ex true. that's the same exact thing we do with Farmer. <laughs> <laughs> same team, right? <laughs> Beautiful. So, definitely will be interesting to see what Julian does here, because mm -hmm. um, just turning in against uh, oh, okay. He's gone hard there with fifth brother. Does he go for the boost to try and block a forward maneuver from Bobber? Um, but like Timo can quite easily have just dialed in a hard one, and then just choose what to do after he's seen Julian's positions. I think I would, if I was Julian at this point, I think I'd probably leave fifth brother where he is. Maybe just take the evade. Maybe a hard one in with seventh sister. Also just take the evade yeah. and just dare Bobber to joust them. Yeah. We'll see which option he goes. What if uh, Timo just rolled up with the, <laughs> like the four straight? Hey, he could well have. Um, and then you just got to hope that and rely on the fact that three green dice with an evade and two force at the most likely takes one damage and then tries to push some damage back into back, back into Bobo with the, the target lock. And especially if Seven Sister hasn't had to spend the force, target lock in the two forces is the option definitely to do some damage. He's gone for that, the boost. That's there for the boost link. And then he's done the hard one with the seventh. Goes to the boost, links for focus. I wasn't sure if the boost is going to fit there. Wow. Does indeed oh, go okay. for the bump there. Oh, that's too straight. Takes yeah. away at least the action. Does get a but range does, one shot. It removes uh, the shot on him by that ship. This is very it true. Does. Got four Jesus. hits with Boba Fett. What mods? Don't need them. As, as well as denying, uh, continuing to deny those uh, missiles. Oh, what is... Is he going to spend the Force or the Focus? Uh, so it's the Force. It's going for the Force. All right, so that means Seven Sisters' ability is not available. I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised, to be completely honest, but because he had the target lock available just to be able to try to push through one of those dice. But here we go. Ah! 
Ah, he would have been able to use it. All right, well, hit, yep. hit, crit. We're, we're still missing the dice cam, if that matters. Oh, my God. Come on, Dion. There it is. Hit it, crit. That's just, yeah, and that's just one shield through on Bobba, which means Bobba's still got a shield, and Seventh is now down to one health. And then th this is the risk. J Julian can't keep trading uh, one damage for one damage. Mm -mm. No. Now he's got even bigger problems. Both Fifth Brother and Seventh Sister are stressed, and Bobba still has that second problem. He's yeah. got the proton sort of, and, and just the fact that the fire spray can shoot out the back. Doesn't yeah. he, he doesn't need to worry about it. No, I mean if I was uh Timo at this point, I'd be thinking to drop some bomb, do the hard to the right, and just dare Julian to try and get out of the trap. Yeah. Um Seventh Sister should be on full force though, I believe. After that turn. Because she she only she spent one yeah, so on the defense regen. and then yeah. spent yep. the focus on the attack. We'll, we'll give him a second to think about it. With the, with the final, I try not to disturb the players for stuff like that because a lot of times yeah. they'll they'll like look down at their cards at some point and go, oh, I should have full force. It's... Yeah. Actually, yeah, Nick, I mean, I can... Nick, just go flip it for him. <laughs> Easy. Ninja, just go flip, flip. Well, not flip, flip. One flip. Yep. Well, no, no. It needs to be active. Active. Uh, if you guys actually read the chat, he says, no, there should be one left. So. Yeah, I'm just not sure why there would only so be one what, left. Uh, that's what Timo said. So he used... I'll leave it to them if that's what the players are saying. Yes. Spent, Spent on, on offense, offense and defense. defense. Yep. Ah, okay. Well, then it, they never flipped it okay. back. That's what was confusing to yeah. us. Yeah. And he still had the focus, so I'm not sure why he would have done it on both, but that stands to them. Um, yeah. I wonder if Julian just hard ones with both of these this turn in different directions. Yeah, potentially, potentially, although I'm not sure if he would want to with splitting them up because it just means that if Timo does a straight maneuver, he'll have the option just to finish off uh, uh, Send the Sister. It's a, it's a complex one, and I do think that Jules is very much, and unfortunately has put himself in a very tricky position here. Uh, you could even just see Bob just doing the, drop the proton do the four straight mm -hmm. and just come around again. He knows he's up on points. He's know, he knows he's up in position wise. He knows that he still has that shield to trade if he needs to. Yeah. I, I mean, I think, I think if I'm Teemo, I don't think you do drop the proton bomb here. I think the, the, there are too many places that these type V ones can be where the proton bomb doesn't affect them. And you know, which sort of direction they're going to do. So even something like a K turn from Bob here is probably quite safe. I, yeah. I love the K-turn here because those Inquisitors are stressed. Uh, you can just continue to follow them. And there's the one heart to the left. Going to clear the stress. Probably slap down and evade is what I'm guessing. Because the one thing uh, Boba Fett doesn't want to do is uh, be at range and then take a couple of missiles with no rerolls. I think at this point, uh, Timo wants to stay snug with those uh, Inquisitors for the duration. <laughs> hug mm, me. Yeah. Hug me. <laughs> yeah. And if, if he does do the K-turn here, it, it makes it very difficult for the Inquisitors to re-engage because you've got Boba right behind you. And any turn that you're thinking about turning around, uh, you give up the option of having that evade token to try and keep you safe. And Boba's going to be right there in front of you with re-rolls and all the works. And he has split the type E ones up. Mm -hmm. Force trying trying to force Bobber to make a choice. Well, that that doesn't make sense uh, because he can't stay snug to both of them <laughs> if they're both apart. Yep. Very nice. Yep. Barrel roll focus. That's math. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. He's going to force him to choose one. Who's he go after? Oh, fifth brother is at range two, but seventh is at range three. But seventh does only have one health left. I mean, one, one damage on either is still points. That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'd go for the, the range two shot myself. I, I agree. I mean, you just got to give yourself the best chances to actually do damage. Yeah, so get, getting, like, sure. getting, getting the ship off the board is nice, but... Uh, he's going for this. He's going for the ship. He's like, you know what? I'm going for the for the upside. Going for the ceiling. <laughs> yep. And that's going to be three hits three. after spending the force. Four dice coming in. Oh. He gets it. Yep. That's a dead seventh sister. Fifth brother versus the world. Yeah, well, I'll that be... that makes this uh, fifty minutes seem something like a formality. Yeah. 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 Sadly, I mean, I believe in fifth brother. I believe in, but I believe in both. Ready for a fifty-minute wild goose chase? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's the funny thing, though, right? Fett, I, I assume Fett's going to continue to harass and, and uh, pursue, uh, even though uh, we're looking at <laughs> Julian trying to turn the tables and be the aggressor. Do do, do we think uh, Fifth Brother just K turns and says, "If Bob is going to come at me, <clears throat> I'll take the shot, but I've already got my target lock. I can home in missile straight back into you." And try and get some points. Try and try and do some damage. Would you guys like a little insight from the uh, from the table, Mike? <laughs> I'm just it. I'm yeah. just listening for a little bit. So so Ju <laughs> oh, Ju Julian Julian is very much aware of of the amount of paint that Boba Fett has been rolling. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's very much aware, but he's not giving up. He's not going down without a fight. Not going down without a fight. He he's gonna try to get some damage here. He's gonna do whatever he can. And here is violence. <laughs> yes. Oh no, homing missile. <laughs> yeah, he went for the town roll. I promise the dice cam is ready to go. Three hits. Roll with Boba Fett. That's a blank. No full damage that time. Fifth brother could evade right? it. Looking for natties. Looking for natties. Not natties. Could spend the force to take only one damage. I think he's just going to take them both. He's going to take uh, them yeah. both. He's going for the upside. He wants that crit. And Boba only has one shield left. Ah, one hit. Oh. He, it's, he's kind of forced to spend the force there. He's gonna spend the time. Oh, he's got a target lock. Oh, ooh, 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 there <laughs> we go. For it. There we go. He, oh, he wants the game changing crit. He got it. All right, he's, he's got gonna... a Bo Boba Fett reroll. Oh no, he had a, he had the force. He had the force available. Yeah. Takes so he a, takes but, the last uh, shield. He'll be able to push a, a crit and a through. direct hit. Direct hit, oh. and then he's gonna use the ability. He uh, so he did. So he took the shield and then the ability. Ah, uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Through, was Direct pilot. was not the game changer he was fishing for. No, blinded pilot yeah. is what you were looking for. <laughs> no, da damaged engine even. Anything yeah, more traumatic than uh, just regular old damage. Or like a structural damage. Ooh, yes. That, that would have been that would have been a good one. Yep. So 176, 143. I will tell you, Julian is giving uh, giving Boba Fett everything he's got. With what he's got one hole left in a dream right now. <laughs> yeah. I think this is the turn we might see the proton bomb dropped. Yeah. Fluff wise, uh, I bet Boba Fett there is uh, annoyed that he's got a repair hole. It's like, I, I thought I had this in the bag. Just got to recharge <laughs> the shields, but uh, now my paint's all scuffed. <laughs> I mean, Julian's been doing a fantastic uh, job of trying to keep himself in the game, always giving himself options, always trying to give himself that win condition. Um, and sometimes it just doesn't fall for you. And 
Timo has done everything he's needed to do to to keep himself on top. Well, as as we discussed going into the the matchup, I think we we're all unanimous, right? It, it was just a, a tough pairing mm -hmm. uh, for Julian. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and there's and, the proton and, bomb coming out. Yes. I think I think any time at the moment where you've got ships less than I five and you're against a slave one bobber, it, it is going to be tough. So that hard one does clear the stress. He's going to have to use a reposition to not take the crit here. I'm pretty sure we're probably getting a uh, a hard turn or bank maneuver slave one shenanigans coming. Julian just thinking through his options. Mm -hmm. Looking for the Command. biggest upside. Yeah, and that is one of the benefits of having that extra time in the final. You can just take slightly longer to, to, to think through your options and work out what's best suited for yourself in any given situation. All right, barrel roll right focus with that linked action. Boba Fett, one turn to the right. He's got the back arc on. Takes the Boba Fett target lock. <laughs> when one reroll just won't do. Yep. And he had the range one. Four dice. Reroll. So. And, and that, right. that is the game. That is the game right on the Yeah. Big claps. Yep. And massive congratulations to Timo. Uh, commiserations to Julian. Um, but a really great game to watch. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, we, as we all said, it was an extremely difficult matchup, but Julian didn't give in, gave him the best he got, and uh, it was a very entertaining final but end of the day yeah congratulations to Timo for getting a very well deserved win so all right give me a second ahead. I'm gonna hmm. I'm your gonna, show Dion <laughs> I am going to go and talk to them real quick give me one second I'm gonna go jump on the table Hi, Timo. Hi, Julian. Just uh, went for a smoke. Yes, yes, I did. I did see that. Hey, well, first, congratulations on getting a win here. You won a Space Jam, and now you also won a Galactic Championship qualifier. Feeling good? No, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Quite. Awesome. So, um, could you give us a little insight into why why bring this list? You know, there's the the Nantex have been running around a lot. You brought yourself a Boba Fett and Dengar. Uh, give us the reason why. Because it's uh, Boba Dengar, <laughs> <laughs> best list in the world. I mean, uh, you you no, got you um, got the one two punch, high initiative, uh, hitting hard. What are what are some of the matchups that uh, that you played? Uh, this weekend, maybe that gave you gave you some trouble. Uh, this weekend, what gave me trouble? Um, yeah, the Nantex were no problem. Uh, the only the only Nantex that was a problem was that was uh, Nicholas Nicholas God mm -hmm. because he played very very well, uh, even sacrificing his Hunfak uh, to a torpedo and a range one shot from Boba. Uh, he made it really well, and that was a very, very tense and close game. We ended with one hole in Boba and one hole on the last Pastanaki ace, and I dodged the arc in the last round. Mm. That was the toughest game I had. Um, normally, um, in the last Galactic Qualifiers, I always ran that list. Uh, there, the list that gave me the most troubles was uh, Death Ray and... Um, Kova and stuff. All right, were you able that to? Was... You were able to dodge those matchups this week? Yeah, this weekend. I, I just, I just got one ray with two A wings and uh, with a good block of Boba and the torpedo that killed one A wing in one round. Um, 
and a ray that did the sloop in the wrong way. Uh, that Oof. was quite good for me because after that I could finish off Ray in two rounds and that was game. Mm -hmm. um, and the only game I lost was against uh, Bobanim. I think he dropped out in top 16 today, Andy. Yes. From, from Austria. Um, that game started off really good for me because I put Nim down to one hull, but then my Boba died in three shots from his Boba and the Prox Mine, and I could do couldn't do anything. <laughs> the, the toughest game, but the toughest game was uh, the top eight. I think was streamed against these uh, HMPs. Yes, that was an interesting I, matchup. I, I, I was so toothless in that game because Boba and Denga did no damage at all. Yeah, your your None. proton torpedoes were wet noodles, man. <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> two torpedoes and a range three shot from Boba, and getting one shield off, uh, two shields off of a uh, agility one ship is <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> um, but in the end, I think I was quite lucky when he misjudged uh, that I was leading on points. Yeah, he thought he was leading. Um, I think I did very well uh, to outfly that bit and not to get damaged and because it was so hard to engage and even with with no working rats it was even harder um in this game i was uh boba was quite consistent in his damage i think oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> and and and, and the, the match winner was the first torpedo on on uh how was it called uh vermil mm-hmm because the blinded pilot disabled the meal completely. 